I'm going to try and quickly go over how to fit these brass knuckles that are available on eBay and Amazon and everywhere onto your Bomber RR10. Um, there's a few things to know about it first. Uh, probably the first one being is that it will raise your steering rack angle a little bit. So I have a temporary temporary horn on there. It's just plastic there. You can see it better. It's just plastic and I'm going to make sure that it works okay and all that stuff. To fit your stock wheels you will need some type of extension, even a small one, otherwise the back of the hubs will not clear the RR10 wheels. I'm not a real big fan of these, but I mean, we really don't have any other choice right now. In the kit also comes two flange bearings, two pivot balls, some screws, an extra pivot ball, uh, these I actually got from the hardware store. The two on the left are two different inner diameter M3s and the one on the right is an M4. Uh, I just had some grease. Uh, seven millimeter, similar stuff here. Another note is when you go to put the steering onto the new knuckle, you have to move to a shorter screw, otherwise it's going to hang down. Uh, a couple picks to get the bearings out, some Loctite, you'll need your 1.5 and 2 millimeter drivers. Alright, I'm going to put one together with some Loctite and I'll get back. One quick note on putting these together is you see how there's three screws that come with them and there's a whole bunch of holes in both sides. If you look, you can leave a gap here. So you can theoretically change your camber. If you use the other set, you could set it in flush. And you could do the other side opposite to change it if you wanted to. Um, I think I'm just gonna leave them most of the way out on both ends because there's already camber on the C-cup things. These guys here are pretty uneven. So I'm gonna leave it together like that. Now after you take your stock knuckle out, you want this large size bearing out of there, which would be easier if you just had on hand because it doesn't come out of there that easy. At least mine didn't. And these ones that come with the kit, uh, these are unsealed. You may want to replace them with some better sealed bearings. Uh, they don't look too impressive to be honest. Um, I'll press crease and put the bearings in and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that that's done, you want to take your old knuckle screws and use a washer that you bought and one of the pivot balls and set it up like that. I'm not sure if you can see it too good. But there's the head of the, uh, the screw, the washer, and then the pivot ball. And these two other bearings are flanged. You're going to want to take those and get ready to grease them and put these into these large holes. Now what you'll do is to actually mount it onto the axle is I, I put the flange side on the bottom just like you would your cup in there and then I took this screw I'm not sure if you can see it here and I put it through on top like that with a washer there you can see it in there. You have to be conscious of how much you center your washer because it can kind of uh, deflect and possibly bind. Um, you know, I thought of inverting this, but then obviously you're going to be dragging in the grass or whatever. And I thought of actually crossing these two, but then you're going to have on the left side, it's going to be down into the dirt. And there's an entire possibility that you're going to add a lot of tow to the vehicle. I'm not really sure if that's possible or how it would work with it. You know, one up and one down. So you put your pivot ball and your washer in there on both sides. And then like I said, you got I have to use an extension. And that's it. It should work. Alright. Thanks.